Everything starts from a drawing. At the very start, I did a few sketches and drawings using the actual models from the game as a reference. Next step was to make a cardboard cutout of a part I wished to work on and start placing crumpled paper and taping it to the cutout. There are multiple ways how to get your base shape, I'll indicate some of them on the left, however I prefer personally the one with the crumpled paper. For the body I used a different technique, I basically took one of those long toothpicks and bent it into shape, adding tape to hold it. If the end result seems lumpy, you can always apply tape around the object and pull it really hard. It will flatten out any lumps and then you can add more paper to even it out. The fins and extra tails of the mobfish are created in the same manner, however mostly I forgo the paper part, either starting off with a toothpick or a popsicle stick. I attached the upper tail immediately by cutting out a hole in the top of the body, placing it and securing it with layers and layers of tape. When in doubt, tape it. The smaller parts are harder to do because they're supposed to be thin and you have to be careful the tape is not messy or it might ruin the next step. Since his body shape is different and has no clear mouth, I decided not to make the head separate like I did with the mawfish. Instead, I made what basically is a sausage shape with the devil's tail and decided to work with that. The Shrock's tail shape is a bit more like a rhombus, so to achieve the shape, I used the long toothpicks that I taped to the side of the tail. The body was bent into the pose I wanted and then I applied a ton of tape because tape holds everything. For straps like shield, armor, and scales, I cut out cardboard pieces and attached them to the main body with more tape. At first it was very flimsy, but I put more material in between the scales and applied more tape, which held it in place very nicely. As you can see, I constantly reference my drawings on how the scales should look and how far they should be spread. It's nice to have something to compare your work to on the fly. Just like the other fish, I made little fins out of popsicle sticks and tape, this time six of them. It's nice to have a reference for your art, just to make sure everything is the right scale. That pun was absolutely terrible. Here you can see a glimpse of little stands I created for them, made out of hand-carved wood and some drilling. Time for the next step. First I get a plastic container that I know will absolutely get trashed by the end of this. I poured in around half a cup of wood glue and mix it with water. This is so the glue is a bit more liquid and the wood glue itself upon hardening should make it water resistant. Keyword is should, I have never actually tested it. Thin strips of paper were cut and dipped into glue and then applied all over the parts that were created. The tape smooth surface will make it a bit challenging, but if you wrap it around a few times it will form an anchor and will not slide around. I put around 5 to 10 layers on every part. The more layers you will have, the stronger it will be. Every part gets the same treatment, you must be careful however not to let any holes slip by. This is why making sure the tape is not messy is very important at the start. I cut the mouthpiece where it would naturally open and got rid of the backside because it would just get in the way. I also added several tiny rows of teeth to the mouth. It wasn't in the original design, but I thought it would look really good. I usually tape the parts together, but the new type of glue I used didn't let the tape stick, so I went to the extreme measures hot glue and toothpicks. A toothpick was glued to the roof of the mouth and then stabbed it into the main body, making an anchor point. After that, I applied more glue to really make sure it's not going anywhere. The main parts are placed now and it's time for paper mache. A good material to use is egg cartons. They can be dissolved and mixed with glue. When it hardens, it becomes hard as rock and pretty light on top. I covered both the fish in this paper mache mixture to add details I couldn't before. With paper mache you can actually make sharp corners while with tape I couldn't. I used a toothpick to engrave what I assume are the gills of some sort in the sides of the fish while the matter has not yet hardened. I actually forgot to record part of the footage however I applied another layer on top of the both fish to make them more smooth. 
The tail of the mawfish was too short, so I ended up cutting it off. After that, I used an owl to poke holes for the tendrils. I made the tendrils by taking pieces of string and dipping them into glue. Once they were dry, I used a hot glue gun to place them in. At this point, I had to redo the tails. Once more, a toothpick was used and I skipped the other parts and went directly to the paper mache to save time. The fish are dry and their shapes are done. Now all they need is a nice coat of paint. I mixed several grays and blues for both of the fish, along with a luminescent paint for the Sharok. I started by adding a dark coat to both of the fish and then blending it into a lighter tones to match the texture and color of the originals. To achieve the raised effect the bumps have on the shaw rock, I mixed the paint with glue, allowing it to harden and not flatten out fully. When the paint was done, the last part was to finish the little stands, or trophies as I like to call them. The trophy shapes are catered around the fish, locking them in. Once that was set, they were done and ready for a nice little photo shoot. I hope you enjoyed watching the process, the actual time this took was about 2 weeks due to them constantly needing to dry. If anyone's interested, I will create a small vote for further ideas for projects that I have to see if anyone's interested in anything specific. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.